Hey, what's going on, everybody? Uh, this is Taylor, and episode two of the Truly Terrible podcast is finally here. Uh, sorry to some of you. I tweeted to someone on Twitter. I was like, uh, that's where I do most of my tweeting, uh, that I would put it up on Wednesday. And then when I sat down and was thinking about doing it on, doing it on Wednesday, I was like, you know what? I just don't feel like it's going to be as good right now. Uh, I'm just going to hold off till Friday, uh, see if I come up with some more ideas or things like that on Friday. And it, I feel more comfortable with it now. So, uh, first and foremost, this episode, uh, I want to thank you guys for coming back and watching it. Um, I'm still fucking shocked that there are people who give enough of a shit to come around and watch my stuff still after I took such a long hiatus. Uh, and someone actually sent me a little comment about that that I'll address later in the second half of the show when I do the Q&A and uh, advice stuff. But uh, this episode is primarily brought to you by my Patreon. I just started a Patreon. Uh, you can find that link below if you're listening to this on Podbean or Squarespace, not Squarespace, uh, SoundCloud or any other medium like that. I'll try and link it on those profiles, but I'm kind of a noob when it comes to all that stuff. So just come back to this YouTube video or just check my Twitter. It's posted there. Uh, yeah, really anything you guys could spare, that's, that obviously helps. Uh, I don't expect anything from you. Like if you just want to continue to listen for free, uh, that's totally fine. I understand. There are plenty of podcasts and shows and things that I take in out there as a consumer and they offer extra shit but it's like at the end of the day you know I doesn't mean that much to me and if that's the boat you're in totally understand if not you know thank you so much that means a lot that, that you would offer up money when you don't have to to help me out so uh, links below check that out really appreciate it if you do I uh, don't want to drone on about that anymore oh and all the perks I don't even remember them all you can see those on the actual patreon page uh, the big sponsor that I'm sure a lot of you have heard about, uh, they're up and coming, you know, promoting on a lot of big podcasts, and even I think I saw a commercial on TV, very blessed to have them as one of my first sponsors, so let's get into that first. Uh, we've got, da -da -da, where the hell did I put, there it is. Uh, this episode of T Truly Terrible is brought to you by Tim's Old Fashioned Taxidermy and Barbecue. That's Tim's Taxidermy and Barbecue dot biz, if you want to visit their website. And their copy for me is... Oh no! My cat and or dog has died. I'm so hungry, but I also want a way to remember old Bruno. How many times has this happened to you? For me, it's at least a dozen. Tim's Taxidermy and Barbecue makes lean meat into top green meat, meaning that none of it gets wasted. But wait, what happens once I'm finished eating? Simple. Just wait for your newly stuffed friend to arrive at your doorstep. Just 10 to 12 short weeks later, you'll be awoken by the sight of your former companion stuffed to the gills with a mixture of cotton, steel wool, and Tim's patented family fill recipe. Your stuffed pets make a great conversation starter, as well as the perfect centerpiece for special occasions or everyday use. Order now with this coupon code YOUKILLITWEGRILLIT and get a free second side with your meal, as well as a holiday hat to keep your buddy warm and festive for the winter. So, uh, I absolutely love it. You know, growing up as a kid, I, I had a lot of, and this isn't a new company, by the way. They're up and coming now, but I was on them, you know, in, on the ground low when I was little. I went through a lot of dogs, a lot of cats as a kid. I guess just one cat. They weren't tough enough to, to hang with me for a while. Went on a lot of, of goofy adventures, and unlike shit like Adventure Time where the dog survives, uh, dogs die a lot on little childhood adventures, you know, hate to say. So I was losing dogs, you know, two, three a month sometimes, and the only way I took any solace in it uh, and was able to muster up the courage to buy a new undoubtedly dead soon dog would be to take them over to Tim's, uh, have them, you know, grill it up for me so that nothing is wasted. They're very green over there, very uh, environmentally conscious. Uh, and then I would bring my stuffed my stuffed friend home, keep him there, uh, dress him up like Santa. You know, if it was a smaller dog, perfect centerpiece like I already read for the, the Christmas dinner, Thanksgiving. You give him little thematic hats and ribbons. Uh, it's really just a lot of fun for the whole family, and I, I don't see anything wrong with it. Um, you know, if you enjoy environmental tasks, then the fact that you consume the dog and nothing is wasted, I'm sure you're a big fan of that. Uh, speaking of which, you know, before you go and do that, you should know that not all dogs taste alike. Those little foo-foo uh, little dogs, they're so stringy and just, like, just sinewy that it tastes like shit. If you have, like, a Mastiff or something, uh, me and my friend made a play date out of it once where we both just happened to have dead dogs. Like, oh, my God, let's head over to Tim's together. Uh, he had the Mastiff. I had the small dog. We ended up just kind of picking around the remains of my animal. But uh, the Mastiff, it was almost like... Uh, very lean, but also like uh, venison, a little gamey. So uh, I think I've given them more than their money's worth of promotion there. You can tell I really appreciate their product and their patronage of the show. So uh, absolutely check them out. Uh, once again, that is Tim's Taxidermy and Barbecue.biz. All right. Um, 
Sorry, God, I just did that thing that I hate when other people do on their podcast, clearing your throat directly into the mic like a fucking idiot. God. Ugh. Well, I'll get more professional with it over time. We'll see. Maybe not. So I already talked about the Patreon. Oh, I was going to do just a little bit of, of hockey talk this week. Like, I don't know how many of you actually give a shit about hockey enough for me to, to talk a bit about it, but it is my favorite sport. It's the only sport that, like, when me, Woody, and Kyle are talking about, uh, you know, something that happens in the NFL, or I guess I know a bit about college football, but not enough to really keep pace in conversation. That's why I always bring it back to hockey, because that's my only real, you know, point of reference for a lot of things to do with sports. Like, I played every sport growing up, but as soon as I got pretty competitive with hockey, it wasn't like you, oh, you can play this in this season and this in that season. It was like, no, you do hockey year-round, and that's just the way it is. Uh, if you want to really get good at one sport, you kind of have to do that. But uh, St. Louis Blues, my team, uh, starting out pretty good. You know, our, our offense isn't as hot as I would would have anticipated. Uh, I mean, Tarasenko's doing fine. He's got, what, like a quarter of our goals. I think we've got 13 this year. He's got three already. A um, couple of the rookies are looking good. We played the Oilers twice already, and they got, for those of you who don't know, Connor McDavid. He was the huge uh, draft pick for the shittiest team last year, and they just so happened to be, like, the shittiest team for the last half a decade. You know, Oilers fans who are listening to this, I'm not, like, pooping on your team. It's just, you know, you guys have had some pretty shit luck. Uh, not with the draft, though. You've had excellent luck with the draft, just with the results. You had bad luck. But uh, I was thinking that that guy would at least score on the Blues – once over his first two games because uh, we're four games in right now we had to play the Oilers twice which you know kind of sorry to say Oilers fans it's, I'm always happy when I look and I see that we're playing the Oilers because it's like all right fairly easy win 95 percent of the time but uh yeah that dude just got shut down seems like Eichel for the Sabres and quite even Fabry for the Blues and uh Periaco a lot of people are kind of outshining him so far but uh you know, he's going to step it up. It'll just take him, you know, a few weeks to get into the swing of it. You can already tell he's going to be an incredibly good player. Uh, yeah, I'm excited to be watching Edmonton in the next few years, and hopefully, you know, they've already got Hall and so many other draft picks way high up there. You figured they'd be decent by now, but I guess not. But, uh, yeah, I looking forward to the game tonight. Going to watch it at my house here on NHL Game Center. If it isn't blacked out, good God, if you haven't already bought NHL Game Center, don't fucking buy it. Or NBA hoop time or whatever the hell that is. You know, I, I have a friend who is way more into the NBA than the NHL. I kind of have to pick one because it's the same season. But it seems like every time there's a game of relevance on there, it's, it's blacked out and it won't show you. And I don't have TV. I only have, like, Hulu, Netflix, and NHL Game Center for my needs. And so I end up having to find it on the Internet and then stream a less than HD form of it on my TV like a poor person would. Uh, yeah, it was, I don't know, the, I bought it like two and a half years, seasons ago, and they were way less clear about what you were getting as far as blackouts than, than what you actually ended up getting. So that was kind of horseshit, and it pissed me off. So I would not recommend that product at all. You know, I'd even prefer to have saved my like 150 bucks, 130 bucks, or whatever I paid, and just deal with the shitty quality online, because, you know, I don't like supporting companies like that that mislead you as to what you're going to get. But, uh... Anyway, so I was looking around on, like, news sites. I always do that before PKA. It just ends up that most of the time I feel like my topics that I find aren't that good. And so it's even harder now to find good shit for my own my own program, my own program here. And so uh, I, just like a adult, I was looking up, like, uh, goofy news or, like, weird news or strange news stories, things like that that happened in, like, the last year that maybe could have, uh, you know, piqued my interest a bit and given me something to talk about. And every one of these weird news or strange news sites are fucking ridiculous. Like, this doesn't make any goddamn sense, any of this stuff. Like, every once in a while you'll see an actual article of, you know, like, a child soldier actually turns out to be master programmer when presented with computer in the, you know, Congolese uh, university that he broke into after a child soldier raid. Uh, and even that, it's like, well, how the fuck am I supposed to take that seriously? There's no way this guy just went in there and it's like, oh, me repositioning and cleaning AK-47 since I was a toddler really helps me uh, knowing how to do this Java coding. Uh, so I have to take all of it with a grain of salt, but I was scrolling down through the articles and there's literally... An article here, just, it's 
it's a little plate on a guy's three fingers, and it just says, look at these tiny dumplings. That's it. That's it. That passes as content? Look at these fucking tiny dumplings. That's what I'm bringing to the table right now. Look at these tiny dumplings. Is that weird? No. No, the only weird part about this article is that you would think that tiny dumplings are weird enough to post there. Like, it's not... Like, if it was like, look at how this, you know, uh, blind man can chisel Abraham Lincoln's head with, uh, you know, out of graphite on the tip of a pencil, which, that would be pretty weird and cool. That's neat, because that's something that is small, that is really hard to make small, you know? A fucking dumpling is not even hard to make small. It's, it's not that difficult. It's the same, it's like even less impressive than when they get 600 people together and they make a big pizza. Like, there's no limit to how big a pizza can be. You know, it, and even that would be hard because you have to find a big fucking oven or you have to just like invite Kyle over and use that flamethrower evenly, which would be very difficult and not very safe. Uh, but yeah, tiny dumplings, the fuck is, is this, I mean, it's on, oh wow, this is actually on the Huffington Post. So, you know, oh, excellent, excellent journalism standard there. And then uh, I hate the improper use of ellipses. Uh, ellipses are those three periods that people put in a row in sentences as like a breakup or to seem more dramatic or when they post something on Reddit and it's like, uh, hey guys, so I saw this at the grocery store today and then period, period, period. It's like, and then you click on it and it's, you know, a picture of a cardboard cutout and it's, you know, someone drew a dick on the mouth and it's holding up, uh, you know, Oscar Mayer hot dogs. And it's like, oh my goodness, so clever and funny. Uh, but yeah, it's, I, I really don't like that ellipses thing. The one I'm seeing here is, uh, attention target customers, this store plays porn, da, da, da. by accident. Oh, you see, they, they almost had me going there that they thought it would be a real weird news story that they were playing it on purpose to offend customers because that would be genuinely weird. But thank God they, they removed the veil from my eyes, so to speak, to demonstrate that it was by accident, meaning that this fucking Target doesn't play porn. It was some kid that thought it would be funny. I have a friend who did that at Best Buy. Like, actually, it's probably like 10 years ago now where he got on... Uh, tube galore or some site on their computer section and just started playing something and then we both walked out quickly I, after I'd already purchased whatever I was there to get. Maybe a new Xbox, uh, or I guess it wouldn't even, it might have been an Xbox original controller if it was 2005 or so. But, uh, yeah, that these are just terrible articles. Rodent repulsion after man finds mouse and sandwich. Is this one of history's most notorious outlaws? It's just, you just found a grainy picture of an old guy in a top hat and you knew nobody would ask questions. Like, Good God. But, uh, yeah, so I'm going to steer clear of these weird news sections, unless you guys can point me to one that doesn't blow donkey dick, because this is just bad. Uh, let's see what else. I, I did find a couple of real news things. Something that kind of made me laugh was there was a... And I didn't actually read the article through all the way, but uh, apparently a police officer, in or a police chief, rather, a chief... You know, the head honcho uh, of, of, in Florida, of course, because these things tend to happen in Florida, uh, bashed Obama saying that he didn't care about cops because Obama took his tank away. Like, And I looked at the picture, so to be fair, when you see the word tank on these sites, you picture that like Abrams, massive, hulking, you know, big thing of iron. And like this is still way bigger than the, the original Hummer and all that. It's uh, reinforced steel and... Uh, adamantium, you know, all those uh, fancy uh, compounds they use in the military. But it's not like a traditional what you picture as a tank. You know, there's not a giant, you know, I don't know, 50 millimeter gun or whatever those guns are on tanks. I'm not sure I'd have to ask uh, Mr. FPS Russia next PKA. But um, yeah, just to say like Obama doesn't care about cops because he wants to take away your, your tanks, like and you've heard me talk about politics enough times to know I'm not a huge Obama fan, but, like, get off that guy's dick with this. Like, who fucking cares? Like, yeah, you lost your tank. You know what you sound like when you bitch about losing a tank? You sound like a petulant little child, a little bitch who just wants his toy. And that's like if I had, uh, you know, one of those pretend cars. Uh, not pretend cars, but those... God, what a terrible way to explain that uh, right off the bat. Oh, I know what you mean, Taylor. Pretend cars? Yeah, you're not a total, you know, mush idiot right now. But uh, those little 
electric cars that kids can get in that you get as a toy or you, when you're young and it kind of looks like a Hummer or it looks like a Jeep or it looks like a, if you're a girl they have the little pink convertible ones like the Barbie car and you can actually sit in them and drive them around and I had one of those as a kid and that that's the kind of reaction that I would give my parents if when I was like five they were like you know what no more driving around in your uh, electric Jeep today because you've been naughty you've been using the electric Jeep to go beat minorities and uh unlawfully assault citizens in the city and I was like that's not true it's not true well it's only a little true but like you know you hate me you hate me and then I run inside and play with a different toy that they also provided for me but I'm just so bitter because I can't play with this one toy that's what this officer is like like fucking get over it dude you don't need a tank you don't need a tank like I know it's really cool I bet it is really really neat for you know if anyone ever comes by the station and you're the head honcho so you're feeling like hot shit and then that having that tank there is like an extension of your genitals. Like, you know, I'm not just a, a cop anymore who constantly feels threatened by the side of, uh, you know, military Marines who came back and were in more dangerous situations than me. No, now I've got this and I'm in control and I've got some more reach motherfucker. But, uh, yeah, that, that's ridiculous. Like, I don't like Obama. I don't think he's a very good president at all, at all. But at the same time, give the dude a break. Like, he probably wasn't even the one that was saying, uh, no, no, you can't have your tank anymore, but, uh, it's not just me saying that. Like, he just doesn't want you to have a tank, and honestly, I don't want you to have a tank either. Like, settle down. There's no reason for it. Um, there was a story this week uh, about Bieber, Justin Bieber, whipping his dick around uh, somewhere. I, I haven't even seen the pictures. Uh, we were talking about it on the show last night, and Kyle was, you know, linking pictures of it and I just something about it felt weird I guess I still assume that he's like 15 even though I know he's not I know that he's only you know he's probably like 22 now like 21 20 21 I don't know I, I see I don't know how old that guy is and so I it feels like it's still gonna be a child but from what I've heard he's he's an adult now and he's not got a bad dick so that you know good for him good for him you know although it is kind of ridiculous that it, I guess he was out on a balcony somewhere you know just kind of jogging around naked which as we all tend to do let's be honest here uh, that's not fair that he can get away with that in plain view of children mayhaps I don't know if that's true I made that up but we're going to go with it as fact in plain view of children many children uh, potentially and they're just like oh look at his dick instead of like Justin Bieber potential sex charges for flashing his dick around like if i did that because i'm not famous they wouldn't be like ooh murka dirka exposed host of the truly terrible podcast runs around naked for fun it would be like uh no you're arrested so um yeah you're coming to jail you just exposed yourself potentially to children in public so goodbye but because he's famous he gets to gets to get away with it just uh down with the one percent am i right you know that one percent of people who can get away with with flashing their junk and not get in trouble, or at least one percent of men. Most women can do that, and it'll just show up on like uh, Joe Blow or some website like that, where it's or not Joe Blow, that's the movie site. Uh, I don't Buzzfeed, Buzzfeed, that's the one, or Gawker, and then it's just kind of like a fake outrage, like that Jennifer Lawrence thing, where it was like if Hulk Hogan gets caught having sex, they're like, I'm not taking this down ever. And it's crazy for you to ask me to. And then if Jennifer Lawrence's tits pop out because her cloud got, you know, evaporated, or I don't know the terminology, but her cloud got hacked, uh, supposedly, and people saw her tits, and so they then went the other direction of like, can you believe that people are leaking these nudes online? It's like, yeah, yeah, we can. And I can't believe that you can't just come out and say that this is great for business for you. Instead, you're going to pretend to take the high road, which is so much worse than either being a scumbag or just taking the high road is pretending that you're taking the high road while being a scumbag because then you have no no credence in the future ever and it shows that you are a piece of shit. Like, I guess nobody's really judging them based on that. They just want to creep on other people's lives. Anyway, why am I talking about them, giving them any promotion whatsoever? As if I'm big enough to influence Gawker or BuzzFeed at all. They're going to be like, oh my god, we've been renounced by a minor podcaster of no relevance. Oh, uh, top ten ways. Truly terrible is the worst show ever. It's going to be their next list. Um, that would help me out a lot, actually. <laughs> Hopefully they do that. But, uh, alright, so... Little recap on what I've, some hobbies I've been getting into recently is, uh, 
board games. I've been get, that sounds really kind of dumb. Actually, no, what? No, I'm not going to start backtracking before I even uh, get my point out there. Because you know, I've had people message me when I I requested that you guys send me some YouTube uh, PMs and stuff for questions and topics, things like that. And I'm going to get to that later, but a couple people, of course, are asking, like, hey, what the hell are you doing with your free time now? It doesn't seem like you ever played video games anymore. It doesn't seem like you have that much interest in them. And you know, honestly, until Nazi Zombies comes out, I really don't give a shit about video games. I'm not, I have no interest in playing any of them. Uh, the most recent video game that I've played through is I replayed through a couple of the old Pokemon Game Boy games. And that was more fun with video games than I've had in a long time. But then again, like, every probably 18 months on average, I go back and play through that game, uh, either Red or Silver, one of the really, really early ones that came out, and I guess Red was like 97 or 96, I don't know, I, got, I remember I got it when it first came out, and it was the shit of like, oh my god, this game is so in-depth, I can't believe you can raise Pokemon like that, and it, you know, I don't know, oh god, no, I've talked about Pokemon enough, I don't need to go into that, but board games, board games, that's what I've been getting into. Uh, Melissa's always been really into board games. Uh, not like, you know, uh, Yahtzee or something like that. It's uh, like Arkham Horror is one we've been playing a lot. I've been playing, uh, I've played, we have Talisman, the fourth edition, and both of these are, well, I guess they're, they're really different. But um, Arkham Horror, it's fun to play with friends because you're basically an investigator and you have to kill Cthulhu or some monster like that, and uh, you're working together the whole time. So unlike other board games where it takes like four hours and you kind of hate each other the whole time, uh, this one, you're always doing your best to help, and if you get a shitty roll because everybody's on the same team, they're like, hey, look at that. That kind of, like, angled up weird on the table, you know? I think you should get to re-roll that just to be sa Oh, yeah, you got a you got a good roll now. So, okay, well, yeah, we'll just pretend that didn't happen and that we're playing fair. And so, yeah, that's a really fun game. Arkham Horror, check that out. I'm sure it's at every game store out there. Uh, I really don't know how popular it is for real in the sphere of board games. I don't know if any of you guys are into it, but, uh, yeah, it's, it's a barrel of fun. The Talisman's fun, too. The biggest one I've been playing all the time recently because uh, a lot of my friends introduced me to it like two months ago is this game called Settlers of Catan. And I'm sure that you guys have all heard about it because it's really fucking popular. But it also is just a potential evening ruiner if you play with some sourpuss who doesn't get their way with every trade and every transaction and they act like they're the victim perpetually and then they take it seriously and it's like oh you're not allowed to do that you shouldn't be able to do this blah 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 especially because the friends that i play with don't actually play by the fucking real rules 100 percent of the time and they're, they're kind of you know amorphous with what we allow and what we don't uh so that's kind of shitty a good percentage of the time but the fun always outweighs it uh, maybe because i just enjoy those kinds of games where it's a lot of you know scheminess so to speak but it should be scheminess scheminess rather within the confines of the rules and not allow this other shit to to come out where it's like you know uh, showing people your hand because you don't want them to steal from you or something like that why the hell am i getting so in-depth on a game that 98 percent of you probably haven't played or maybe it's way bigger than that i have no idea i have no idea that's why i asked so let me know if you guys are into board games also give me like Give me suggestions. Like, give me a cool one. I want to try something new. I'm really getting into those. Uh, even though I'll probably fall right out of that phase as soon as Nazi Zombies comes back. Just like, as of late, I've fallen out of the Magic the Gathering phase. Which, that is the most dangerous phase. That's like a mild heroin addiction. Uh, Magic the Gathering. Like, I fall into it really deep for like three or four months at a time. During which time I, pr I spend just untold amounts of money on cards that I'm just certain that I'm going to need and I'm going to use all the time. And then out of nowhere, just one day, you know, I notice I'm just not, not playing as much. I haven't looked at those forums in a while. I haven't checked the new set and what cards are coming out. And then before I know it, it's like, God damn it, I've got like a grand of cards that are not getting their, their use out when I could have spent that money on so many more things. But then at the same time, next time you get into it and you have those cards, You'll be like, oh, thank God I bought these, but none of these are standard anymore, and there's so many new cards. I need those now, and then it sucks you right back in. It is, it really is cardboard crack. Um, what else do I even have? Oh, yeah. So, I saw this guy, and who knows how legit this story is. Uh, it's a guy who got caught with homemade bottles of wine. In, is this even a current story? Yeah, it's like a few days ago, so it's pretty current. 
uh, is on The Guardian. I know that's like a UK uh, story, uh, not story, uh, publication. I don't know if they're like hyper liberal or hyper conservative. I haven't done any delving into it, but I know I've heard of them before, so there must not be like super tiny. Uh, Children of Britain sentenced to 350 lashes over wine appeal to PM. So uh, from what I glanced through this, and I can't stress glance enough, uh, this gentleman uh, had homemade wine in the back seat of his car when he was in Saudi Arabia. Guy's 74 years old, and he's being subjected to 350 lashes. Can you believe that? Like, what fucking year is it over there? 350 lashes. With what? Like, I was looking up, I even did a Wikipedia page on what constitutes a lashing. And they showed, you know, most of the pictures were like old-timey, you know, before pictures were even a thing where it just was some shit tier wood carving of a guy whipping someone else who has a weirdly, you know, upbeat look on his face because that was the style at the time. Or it's like a mosaic on an Egyptian wall with, uh, or I guess a mosaic on a Greek wall or hieroglyphs on an Egyptian wall. And it's so, so old timey. And then you get to the bottom of the Wikipedia page and it's like someone being whipped in Saudi Arabia three days ago being filmed on an iPhone 4S. It's like, Jesus Christ, like, get with the times. Like, you can't think of a better way. They just, like, chop people's hands off over there. And all for wine, which, to be fair, if I'll play the devil's advocate onto the side of Saudi Arabia for a second, which is a very popular position to take, uh, or I guess not on the side of Saudi Arabia, against the side of this tard, what the fuck were you doing with alcohol or drugs or anything like that in Saudi Arabia? Like, that's... I think it's common knowledge to, I'd say, round about everyone that you just don't fuck around with anything when you're over there because you're, it's not going to turn out well. They're not going to be pleased. They're not going to be like, hey, what are you, what's this? And they're like, oh, don't worry. I'm not a, I'm not a Muslim. It's okay for me. And they're going to be like, oh, thank God. You know, I was concerned there for a second. We were going to have to lash you. And he's like, oh, okay. Can I be on my way then, officer? And he's like, oh, no, you can go fuck yourself. We're actually going to throw you in a dungeon, uh, chop your hands off, and uh, make your children watch. And then they'll be sold into servitude or sex slavery or something. Uh, it's really a macabre, macabre place over there. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I mean, obviously, I'm gonna, I'm gonna err on the side that he shouldn't be flogged to death because, according to the little Wikipedia article I read, that uh, the Jews used to whip people 39 times because the law limit was 40 because they didn't think someone could survive more than 40, and so they'd do 39. So if they accidentally ever miscounted. They could still be like, well, we, we miscounted, but like, yeah, even then, like, we ended at 39, so it's no more than 40. So, uh, very smart, very shrewd move by those fellows. But, um, yeah, if, if 40 would kill you, I don't know if they were using, like, those bull whips with bone on the end, or, or if this is a much less severe type of lashing he's going to get. Uh, but, yeah, there's, there, I can't picture a way this 74 year old man is going to survive being lashed 350 times in public, no less. Like, ugh so weird i can't imagine that like i get uncomfortable if i'm at a friend's house when i was younger and their parents start to scold them in front of me like that I'm, i get uncomfortable with that i can't imagine how uncomfortable i would feel if i had to watch the government scolding someone with a whip in public for i don't know how many lashes can you do like can you like, is it like an hour is that like an hour of lashes it's probably more than that can you request, like, different pacing, like, one a day for a year? Or can you just be like, all right, just knock them all out. Just bing, bang, boom. Uh, you probably wouldn't want to do that. It seems like you'd bleed to death. Um, no, pretty fucked up. Pretty fucked up. I don't know why uh, anyone would be over there. I'm sure there's somewhere in this article that's like, oh, he was over there uh, doing charity work, and he'd actually been making the wine for undercover Christians that wanted to do communion. Uh, that's probably unlikely, but uh, I don't know why you'd ever visit that place that's a not a fun place to go like i i worked with someone at one point who was from saudi arabia and i mean great guy way more uh liberal than most people i would assume over there but he would talk fondly of it and I, we would ask like so you know alcohol you guys aren't allowed to do that he's like oh no no we can't do that not at all we have huge parties a uh, bottle of like your johnny walker black because that's really popular over there that's like 450 dollars it's like jesus christ thank guys thank goodness you guys have that oil money or you wouldn't be able to afford anything uh and he was saying you can get pot over there as well uh marijuana for those of you who aren't as street savvy as i am uh 
And he said, uh, yeah, that's pretty risky, pretty risky when people drive around with pot. Uh, if you do get caught with any amount, the punishment is death. It's like, what? Are you shitting me? I thought I was getting a raw deal, uh, you know, having to worry about even like a ticket a few years ago for a tiny amount if I had it with me, or which I don't smoke marijuana, but if I did, I would be worried about that. This guy, why, why would you even try the drug? Wouldn't you be scared to, to die? Like, that's the only dangerous thing about it is like <laughs> it's legitimately more dangerous than like well i guess that's not true now i was about to give off a, a truly terrible fact that it wouldn't make any sense um yeah so just don't uh if you have a bunch of airline miles to blow go to like ireland or something don't go to don't go to saudi arabia that kind of looks uh kind of shitty anyway that's uh that's roundabout the halfway point and i was trying to hit that on pretty pretty spot on, you know, spot on, and so I figured I could do uh, the other half of the show. I got uh, way more questions and topics and things that I thought I was going to get, and so that's excellent news. Um, I'm going to read through these. These are all just from the YouTube PMs. Uh, if you are a, and these I just go by which ones I like, uh, so if I see one that's good, um, I'll read that. If I see that one person had you know, like five good ones, because some people tend to do that. They send like five questions in, and they're all good. I'm not going to give you, you know, that big of a section of the show, because that's not really that fair to everybody else. But uh, that is one of the Patreon benefits, is that for some amount a month, uh, you can have it guaranteed that uh, you can send in a question or a topic and have it addressed or uh, answered or what have you, uh, pretty much. Uh, basically, you pick a topic for the show that I have to work with, and uh you know, if if you do it and then you send in a topic like, uh, talk about poopy pants and diapers, and it's like, well, you know, what, what the fuck am I supposed to do with that? Uh, I'll still do it because, you know, I'm a man of my word. Um, but anyway, on to these. So first one comes from my boy Kevin. So Kevin says, uh, hey, Merka, great performance on the latest PKA. I've been going back through your channel and watching some old videos. I noticed you had a lot of Borderlands. Did you ever do a Let's Play of that? I think it would be really funny and interesting series to do with fairly little effort, which I think is something you said appeals to you. Yeah, well, thank you for being conscious of the fact that I want it to be very low effort and hence low quality. Um, yeah, I, I, I played Borderlands. Melissa got me into Borderlands a couple of years ago. Uh, I had never played it before that. It's a really fun game, though, and there is a, a similar game coming out to Borderlands soon. Is it Bloodborne? Blood... Battleborn. Battleborn. Yeah, there's a game, Battleborn, that's coming out that's supposed to be really similar to Borderlands. So if we both like that, maybe we'll do a video series of it, just depending on how much I enjoy it. Uh, but yeah, Borderlands is excellent. I, I really enjoy that. Uh, coming in from Tito. Hi, my name is Taylor, and I left YouTube because I, I couldn't find things to whine and feel superior about anymore. Leaving YouTube unannounced was like the ultimate I'm better than all of you move. Uh... I was going to ignore that one, but I wanted to address that because uh, I understand where he's coming from at this point. I, when I first read that like half an hour ago, I was like, I'm going to rip this guy a new asshole. But I decided to, to take the high road. So uh, not the high road, like the medium road, like be a little bit of a dick, but not all the way. Uh, I can see how you could perceive that. At the time, I thought the complete opposite. I thought that because I'd seen people leave the YouTube scene before with their grand goodbyes and that horse shit where it was like, you know, it's been a crazy run and blah, blah, blah. And I'm just, you know, I know you're all going to miss me so much and I can't wait to, you know, find bigger and better things for me. And you're just, you know, you've all been so blessed to, to help me and I've been so blessed to help you and blah, blah, blah. No, like just that big sappy nonsense. And I don't know, it just seems pretentious. Like you're pretending that you're way more important in these people's lives than you are. I don't sit here and think, that for 99.999% of you that you think about me on a daily basis or that you do anything like that, most of you just stop in for a YouTube video. Like, once a week now, I guess. Or, or until the zombie starts, then it'll be more. But I, I have no misconceptions about how important I am to the point where I would need to make a big, you know, farewell video. But uh, I do understand what you, what you mean there. Like, I can... I never had thought about it in that term. I always thought about it as like, well, I'll look like a real dick if I make a big I'm going away video 
and then I suddenly come back, and then people will be like, okay, well, what else is this guy not going to be truthful about? Was he just doing the, this is my last video video, because he knows that'll get a ton of views, and it'll just bring out the sycophants who are like, oh my god, I remember the good old days when he would upload three times a day, and it was each was better than the last, I tell you what. Like, uh, that, I don't know, that, that wasn't my intention ever, to feel like I'm better than you, and I'm sure I'm reading too far into this, Tito. But, uh, yeah, that... That was my thought process. I thought it would be kind of douchey to make a big farewell for what I didn't think was that big of a deal leaving. You know, there's way better people out there on YouTube than me. Uh, Ethan. Hey, I wanted to know, I wanted you to know that you are my favorite YouTuber, and I'm sure you get these messages all the time. Aha! But I miss you. Would you rather, I miss your would you rathers and your commentaries. Why'd you quit YouTube? Have a good one, Taylor. Uh, so... Uh, I just quit because I was working a lot more, and I, you know, when you're first transitioning into the working world there, it's difficult to balance correctly, to have a work-home balance, and uh, I also just figured, like, my channel was not growing immensely or anything. At the time, I wasn't doing PKA, so I didn't have that audience as a, a medium of outreach, and I'd kind of just lost interest. Like, I don't know if people thought I was just being a jokester when in like 50 previous videos when I got these questions I would say like yeah when I, I'm gonna stop when I don't feel like doing it anymore if I feel like doing it I'm gonna do it if I don't I'm not going to uh, and that that is it that's it I just kinda felt like I would talked about all I wanted to talk about for the time being I wasn't having as much fun with it and so I just I just nixed it you know it wasn't anything like some grand realization one day of like I've wasted my life but I just I just decided I didn't want to do it that much anymore uh, Shane Hey, what happened to your friend Maximilian? So me and Max are still buddies. Uh, we live in different cities now, so I haven't got to see him uh, very much at all, even in like the last couple of years. But next time he's in the Lou, uh, we're going to try and hit up hockey game or something like that, hang out. But uh, yeah, he's, he's still around doing really well. Um, Steven. Hey, Murga. I don't wait. He wrote two, and I don't know if they're part of the same message or not. I need to figure. God, I'm a tard. I didn't know if you read YouTube messages at all, but to be honest, you on PKA is like a big influence for me. I really try to be the wisecracking, quick on my feet type person, and lots of my friends know me like that. After watching you on PKA, it's just amazing. Like, you are pretty learned according to me. Not the best judgment, but go with it. And I would like to say I draw inspiration from your humor and think you are honestly hilarious. The guys on PKA seem to brush off your background comments and things, and I s listen specifically for them. You are hilarious, man. Honest to God. Funniest on YouTube, hands down. Uh, this is uh, quite a bit longer, but you're just being way too nice, man. I can't take compliments like that. You're almost making me almost making me uncomfortable. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's really nice of you, Steven. Thank you. Uh, they don't bowl over my comments on PKA. I... Uh, looking at like some of these, I, I just went to like the, my inbox uh, from like some of these are, like from a year ago almost. I'm gonna move up to the to the contemporary one soon, but yeah, that's like a year ago when I was doing PKA, like just starting out. I guess I've been doing it for like a month and a half, two months, a year ago. But uh, yeah, that th that was more of an audio issue. By no means where I don't blame them at all for talking over me at some points because we had a lot more trouble with audio uh, back then, back then rather. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Thanks again, though. That means a lot. Yeah, it's really, really nice of you. Way nicer than I deserve. Definitely not the funniest on YouTube. Uh, one of the fun. I'll, I'll say like top two. Top two. No, I'll take funniest. Uh, da, 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 da. Um, girl advice from dildos everywhere. What that? You can't just write that. You gotta. You gotta ask a question with it. You can't. Oh, you silly goose. Um, yeah, it's hard to just give advice on things when there's no question there. You see what I mean? It's a, That's the crux of the matter. I need a direction from there because I don't know what kind of advice you're talking about. Are you having trouble having sex? Are you having trouble just talking to them? See, I need a jumping off point here, buddy. Uh, Dustin. Hey, Mirka, in regards to some topics you would, you could touch on, I'd like to hear about your... Uh, experience with stand-up, just everything about you performing stand-up, or what you did or didn't like in any any shows you've been to. Uh, so, shows I've been to, I've been to a Bill Burr show, uh, I'm trying to think of the special, he wasn't filming a special when I went there, but I went to Bill Burr, and then I've also been to Brian Regan, and I believe I'm going to Brian Regan again in the next, like, four months or so. He's not as, like, huge in the blue comedy sphere as Bill Burr, like, he's, he works pretty clean, 
but he's honestly hilarious. His cadence is great. I've been watching him for probably even, like even longer than Bill Burr, more than likely, because he's been around way longer, and I watched him when I was young, when my parents weren't particularly fond of me, you know, watching some foul-mouthed ginger yell about uh, women and bankers on, on stage. But uh, nothing against Will Burr. I love that. But obviously, he's more catered to adults. Um, so, yeah, those two were the ones I've been to. I'd really like to go see more. Uh, I know it was either in, like, the next month or two months, I think, that Bill Burr is in Chicago. And that's really not very far from here. So I might look into that, if at all possible. Most likely not, but, you know, it's it's good to, good to think it's possible. Um, da -da -da, Derek. I recall your stance on guns being a lot stricter in the olden days. You even made a video where you stated that the notion of owning a gun is antiquated because it is no longer serves its constitutional purchase of enabling Americans to revolt. I was wondering what made you change your mind. Uh, also, I was wondering if you were going to revive some of the old tropes from your channel, like calling us sluts, calling us, or calling out pretentious twats for being retendous. Retendous, hey, there's that made-up word. Uh, that's, that's a big throwback, Derek. Well done. And distributing high fives for subscriptions. Uh, yeah, I'm a creepy longtime fan. Yeah, that's some of that stuff is really old. That when I was talking about making up words to see if people would agree with uh, those, a lot of you are probably from PKA, so you didn't even know that. I that word retendus is not a real word, and I made it up when talking to God. What was the story? Even a, a smart kid or a kid that thought they were smart, and I would like kids that tried to use vocabularies that I thought were really douchey because they would use like, and I've I've done that before definitely, but. The kids that would like use words incorrectly, like all the time, just because they had way more syllables and made them sound smart. And so I would pepper in fake words like "retendus" and see if they would ever like say it back to me in a different context or in the same context, thinking that they would impress me by learning that word through context clues. And then I could just call them out and say that I made that word up, and you look like a real asshole right now. But uh, yeah, um, distributing high fives for subscriptions. Yeah, I'll, I'll give you high fives. Subscribe and. Uh, click the like and do all that. Does like even help anymore? I don't know. I don't know the metrics for YouTube and how it works uh, as far as promotions. Uh, as far as the gun control thing you were asking about, uh, I don't remember ever saying that I think it's antiquated because I've had guns my whole life. Like, I've always had at least a gun. Um, not like handguns, but I've, I think the first time I went skeet shooting, I was like, skeet shooting is when you shoot those clays that you throw up in the air, like on my grandpa's farm. Uh, I guess I was like six, maybe, when I did that. Like, it's not a 12-gauge. Like, it's just a 20-gauge, but it's, it was a lot of fun. I liked it. Um, I can understand not wanting people to have, like, fully automatic, ridiculously powerful guns, because that's, that's kind of unnecessary. But, uh, yeah, my stance on guns has de definitely gotten more conservative as I've gotten older, and that's just because I've become much more interested in guns, like, more interested in shooting them and how they function, different types, different reasons for different types, the histority, or the histority, god, what the fuck was I trying to say, the the history behind them, things like that, uh, so yeah, that's, that's the selfish truth right there, is I just got more into it, and so I am now okay with it way more, and I don't ever remember, like, you could be totally right, I, maybe I was, like, really against guns at one point, I don't recall that, uh, but I do know that, you know, I did used to be less open to, you know, well, I guess, it would be much easier to be less open than I am with guns now because I'm pretty much like, you know, live and let live, buy your guns, have a good time, just be safe with them. Uh, but yeah, I've never been that hyper-conservative about guns as I am now. But uh, yeah, they're just fun. I like them. They're great. All right. Stefan. Woohoo. That's a fancy name, Stefan. Uh, am I an asshole? So I am in high school, and the teacher assigned us partners for a project that was quite a lot of work. The girl I was assigned to work with sat next to me and then proceeded to go on Twitter. Not wanting to cause conflict, I started working alone. About ten minutes later, I asked her if she could help me with something, and she replied with, Yeah, one second, and so I waited a few more minutes with no help. I then asked if she could help now, and she ignored me completely. I asked her if she was going to work on the project at all, and she replied with, Not really. That's... This being too much work to do alone, I was becoming upset. I told her that I did not care what grade she gets, but I am trying to get a good one, and I appreciate her help. I would appreciate her help. She grunted and just stayed on her phone. Being very angry at this point, and knowing my teacher is one of those those teachers that ignores you when you try and ask for help, I accidentally knocked her drink off her desk, and it spilled all over the floor. In the end, she still never helped, and I got a bad grade on the project, and she still had to clean the floor 
for an hour after school, so am I the asshole? An hour after school? What the hell kind of drink was this? Like, how, how could it take an hour to, or maybe it was because she was on Twitter the whole time, when she should have been cleaning the, the fucking drink up, just going back to Twitter. Um, yeah, you, you know, in the strictest sense, you're kind of being an asshole. Like, if it was one of those, like, $7 Maca Frappa lattes that, that girls like to get, and you spilled that, it's a little douchey, but for the most part, no. No, they should, that bitch should have been helping you do your project. That's ridiculous. And the, the Twitter thing and ignoring you. And, of course, this is one side of the story, as all of these are. Uh, who knows if you were just not asking assertively enough. Uh, should have been more assertive right off the bat. Uh, or even better is you call their bluff and you just take out your phone as well as soon as they start playing with it. And then when they ask, like, aren't you going to do that? You could be like, oh, no, I just figured, you know, I'd, I'd get started when you do. We should work together on this. I'll just wait until you're ready. And then that'll kind of force her to either sit there and literally do nothing and deal with a shit grade, uh, at which point if, that, like, 30 minutes of that goes by, you just have to bite the bullet and do it anyway, or at least that's what I would do because I don't want to prove some stupid point to some bimbo uh, for the sake of not doing well on a project when I otherwise could have. Uh, yeah, yeah, you were a little bit of an asshole, but, you know, I think she was being more of an asshole. So it was a net, it was a net okay for you to be a bit of an asshole there. I think that's fine. All right. So, from Baker. Hey, Merka, I was hoping you could take a really open mind to my question and to not judge me, but to try and guide me. You see, I have dated a few girls, but none of them can meet my sexual expectations. I know it's because I watch so much porn, but if I like it, then I like it, right? Uh, will I ever find a girl who will do the sexual fantasies I desire for me happily? Keep an open mind here. And, or am I doomed to a boring life of everyday sex? Uh, very glad to have you back on YouTube. I am an automatic fan of the podcast and look to, forward to hearing more. Uh, thanks. So, yeah, well, thank you. I appreciate the support there, uh, Luke. And I don't know, dude, like, you're telling me that I need to keep an open mind, but then you didn't, you didn't give me too much to work with there as far as what these fantasies are. Like, this could, this could be something, like, really tame, or I, for all I know, you could be just, whoa, way the fuck out there with, like, you're wanting to, to shit on things and pee on people or I guess just anything at all. There's, that whole world is just... You know, it's really open. Someone can be turned on by anything. If you're, like, really into amputees and you wanted your girlfriends to, you know, uh, remove a foot or something, then that might be kind of fucked up. But I don't think you're that crazy uh, or extreme in your, your wants. Uh, I would say switch. Try and switch the kind of porn you're watching, first of all. If you think that's responsible, I really don't think that's as responsible as you. Actually, no, it could be could be you could have just went down one of those rabbit holes where it's like you start off in normal land and then 20 minutes later you're wondering oh this is a little weird and then 20 minutes after that uh, at the end of the session so to speak you're just like oh my god what dark era of disgusting perversion have i found myself in here what, what is even going on why are there there's animals involved and there's like the fuck uh, and then you just have to kind of reconcile that and wonder like why did i even like that but I don't know what it is you're into, but, you know, if someone doesn't make you happy sexually, then you shouldn't be with them. If you have an issue with it, then, yeah, work through it the best you can. Uh, don't just cut ties as soon as something comes up. Like, you can't just bring up, like, you know, I'm really into having you lay under a, uh, a glass coffee table and then, or I lay under the glass coffee table and then you squat over it and take a shit. And I call that the glass bottom boat, and I think that we should do that more because that's the only thing that I like. And if she's like, oh, you know, I'm really not uncomfortable with that because that's really weird and I think I'm going to go, then, you know, that's, you probably went zero to 60 a little too quick. And you're not going to find many people who like that kind of stuff unless you're in Germany. But, uh, yeah, honestly, just keep going for it, but try and lower or make your sexual expectations a little more realistic. I assume that you're a pretty young guy, uh, maybe a couple of years younger than me, a few years younger than me, maybe you're still in high school, who knows. But uh, these girls aren't, aren't porn stars. They're... They're girls your age, uh, ostensibly, hopefully. Uh, so, you know, give them a benefit of the doubt, too. They don't know what it is you want. You, you probably, like, if you think that these are weird things that you like, it's probably difficult to communicate anyway. But, yeah, just, just stick with it and just try and temper those expectations a bit. You know, it's, it's not going to pan out if you expect everything to go 100% your way right off the bat because chances are if they are weird fetishes like 
what I'm thinking about you liking. I'm sure, of course, I'm being extreme for the sake of humor and hyperbole. I don't really think you want to shit on people. Um, just, just, just keep giving it a go and don't expect too much. Maybe try watching less porn for a while. I, I don't know. I've never uh, had to deal with that. But, yeah, that, that's my advice. Sorry, I couldn't be of more help, Luke. All right. Question for the Truly Terrible Podcast. Um, I'm a pretty shy guy. Not like cute shy, but like shy as if I like you, I'm scared to even be near you. That's a good, <laughs> that's a good way to, to explain it. Good job. Uh, I have good looks, according to people, and I have found myself in one or two good spots to have a girlfriend, but I blew it. Senior year is about 25% of the way done, and I already know I won't be attending the major dances. I'm an antisocial loser who gets anxiety when in social situations I can't control. This girl I like and have liked since kindergarten is my dream girl. I'd know I'd marry her if I had the chance. She used to like me, but I don't now I don't think she does. Uh, I texted her over the summer, and she said something along the lines of maybe hanging out. Uh, I never texted her back, though, because I figured she didn't. She probably did it as a friend thing, since I've known her for as long as I have. Uh, I'm not in the friend zone thing, because I never talk to her anyway. And but she always catches me looking at her. Oh, that's all. Ew, that's always uncomfortable because I everybody's been in that situation where you get caught staring. Uh, it's not just that I've blown it with. It's not just her that I've blown it with because last year a girl I liked gave me plenty of chances to go out with her, but I didn't because I was scared of embarrassing myself and rejection. My mom requested that I should be put on anxiety pills, and I think I will, but I don't know about the long-term effects of them. I just need to get a girlfriend so I can be social and happy. I feel depressed, not like not suicidal depressed, but actual unhappiness. I recently got straight A's on a report card, but I don't care. I want someone to be close with on an emotional and physical level. I want to be the guy who gets the girl and has tons of friends and does stuff other than sitting in his room and playing games. Writing this, I feel like you'll be straight with me and talk about how I'm a pussy or something. <laughs> no, dude. No, I'm not going to be... There's a difference between being straight with someone and just being a kind of a cunt, and if I called you a pussy for no reason yeah you're not being a pussy this is a hugely popular problem that a ton of people have dude like it's not that big of a deal um uh, in the scheme of things like if you had said i'm a you know quarter of the way through my freshman in high school year i would have been like yeah you know you gotta change some things buckle up and get ready for a ride because it's if this is the train that you're the trajectory that you're on then it's likely going to be pretty hard to get off if you've already established yourself as as a guy like that um, but quarter of the way through your senior year, dude, like this is the end is near that you, you got to stop worrying. First of all, this is, that is potentially the worst time that you're at right now to be starting a relationship. You don't want that. Even if it does work out with some girl at your high school and you end up both going to college, chances are you're not going to go to the same place. And then you're going to have this bitter kind of resentment for one another as you're in a long-term relationship at different schools where you're constantly bombarded with fun experiences, but you're kind of being held back from those experiences. And then you'll start to feel like, oh, well, now I'm just, you know, I, I, I have my girlfriend and now I'm still sad. What's wrong with me now? When I mean, we're not having sex because we go to different schools. And so what's the point of all this? And what I'm feeling so depressed. Like this is... This is not the time, dude. You, you do not want to get in a relationship right now. Like, if you can find a casual hookup or something like that, uh, more power to you. You know, it, it seems like uh, that's that's a big percentage of what you want. But you also mentioned the emotional thing a few times. And I can definitely understand that, man. Like, it's, it's difficult to find someone that you emotionally connect with. Really difficult. Way harder to do that than someone who's, uh, you know, physically connecting with you. Uh, so, yeah, it's... It, it seems like you're, you're just really down on yourself, man. Like, just, you need to stop being so critical, hypercritical of yourself. Usually people who are shy, like what you're saying, uh, they, based on shy people I've talked to, they always assume they're being more awkward than they actually are. Most of the time, they're not being awkward. They're just being quiet. And you can't really garner much from someone who's just sitting there being quiet. Like, if someone asks you a question and you kind of just, like, mumble off into nothing, it's kind of like, oh, that's a little awkward, but that's not the vibe I'm getting from you. Like, you're just seeming like a quiet guy, and that's totally fine. So that's better in some situations. I'd, I'd rather hang out with someone who's a little too quiet than someone who won't shut the fuck up, because I am someone who won't shut the fuck up, and it, uh, two of us wouldn't be able to handle a room. We'd both be vying for attention the whole time. You would be, you know, that the compliment to that kind of person. So, uh... Yeah, you got to be less afraid of rejection and also less 
stuck on the whole girlfriend thing. Uh, you don't want a girlfriend right now. You want, you know, maybe some casual sex if you can get that. Um, and if not, just remember, dude, you're going to college next year. Uh, probably. Uh, I'm just inferring. I hope I didn't just read right past that. But, uh, yeah, you can just reinvent yourself, man. You can just reinvent yourself. Doesn't matter. If you go to a re reasonably sized school, even if, like, half of your graduating class from high school goes there, you're not going to see them. You're going to feel like you're going to see them all the time, but you'll see them a couple times a week, maybe. I'm just saying that I went to a school that has like 35,000 people, huge, huge school. Uh, I knew a lot of people going in, but th it's just so enormous that it's like, even though you thought you knew like hundreds of people who would be there at the same time as you, it's like you never see them because that's still such a teeny tiny little percentage. So expand yourself, join other clubs. Uh, join a fraternity if that's something that you're into. That will definitely help you with uh, the social side of things. Um, yeah, just reinvent yourself, and that's that's going to be really difficult for you the first couple weeks or first couple months when you have to just do, for lack of a better phrasing, just fake it till you make it. Uh, you can't go in uh, the same way that you went into high school and then just expect and hope that people are going to be helping you out and uh, inviting you places and doing things like that for you. Uh, you're a guy on a college campus. Nobody wants more guys at a party. you got to make your, your worth shown, something like that. Uh, also, just don't be afraid of rejection. If there's 10,000, 15,000 people at your school, if you go to a pretty small college, then like, there's there's more chicks there than you would know what to do with. Like, just, just go for it. Well, who cares if you get shot down? You're never going to see them again. You will likely never see them again. Just don't ask out girls, or if you see them in class, it'll be a lecture hall, and you can just sit on the other side for the rest of the semester, or just sit next to her and continue to joke around about the time that you asked her out, and, you know, well, that could be creepy, actually. Don't do that. Uh, <laughs> you got to be so careful on that creepy uh, tightrope that every, every guy has to walk nowadays, because anything that can be construed as even a little bit not... Uh, you know, from a sexy guy could be creepy, and then it's all over Twitter, and life's ruined. That's a downer. You shouldn't think about that, because I also, that's not true. But, um, yeah, don't go for the girlfriend thing now in high school. Uh, try and change yourself into who you want to be in college. If you feel like you want to be that social butterfly, get out there and make it happen. Like, go for it. If it, maybe you get out there, you end up being way better at it than you think, and then you end up not even liking it. You realize, well, shit, I thought that I, I was looking through uh, rose-tinted glasses at the other side of the fence here, thinking that everybody else over there had it so great, and now I'm over here, and it turns out I'm looking back to where I was, thinking maybe I am just someone who likes a quieter life, I like being, I, I like a lot of alone time, things like that, and that's totally fine too, man. But you're putting too many eggs in, in the I must get a girlfriend or I must have sex right now basket. Like, just uh, pump the brakes a little bit and... Wait till college, uh, worst case scenario. And it will work out there, I guarantee it, dude. Like, it does for everyone, for the most part. Um, all right. These have been two pretty pretty good ones, back-to-back. -back. I, I have actual advice. Usually, I don't, I don't get that. I guess that's because I switched it over to private messages and not uh, tweets, where it's just, like, asking about butts or boobs, which I guarantee, I haven't read through all these, but I fucking guarantee that one of these is a butts or boobs question coming up um all right this one is damn that i'll probably go to that one next week because that's a very similar topic to the one i just did i don't want to be rehashing over and over um from egg Am I an asshole? I took my dog to a big field last weekend. Many people go there as well, and no one has their dogs on a leash. My dog ran up to another dog wanting to play. Uh, they were really close to us when I took off the leash, and the owner of the dog looked terrified and started calling for her dog. Then her dog started attacking my dog, and I had to go and rescue my dog. So is it my fault I let my dog off the leash when there were other dogs about us, or is it the owner who has a really aggressive dog and took it to a place with other dogs? Um... Uh, but I gotta be honest with you, man. It's it's a pretty even split right here. It depends. At dog parks, isn't it just like a basic rule that you're supposed to keep your dog on a leash because shit like this happens because dogs are animals and they fight and get into scraps and they think that they're protecting their masters when really they're just uh, setting up like a potential lawsuit for them when they eat another dog on accident. Uh, yeah, you shouldn't 
you shouldn't take your dog off the leash, and if you know you have a really angry dog, just go walk around the projects with it and feel tough, man. Like, you don't need to take it to the dog park where people are playing uh, frisbee with their border collies that are just out there for a good time. Uh, yeah, so you're a little bit of an asshole there. You, sh you shouldn't be taking your dog off the leash if there's a rule against it. Uh, but if there is not a rule against it, then uh, then I say go hog wild. All right. Uh, da -da -da. I think I'll finish it up with one more here. Uh, from Jigjikish, just a random smash of uh, letters username. Uh, truly terrible advice. I have one testicle. Hey, Taylor, when I was born, the doctors botched the delivery and they had to remove one of my testicles. Jesus Christ, dude. How the fuck do you botch a delivery that bad where they just... Well, I guess you, I, you might know, you know? They, or I guess they know. You don't remember because you were a baby, but what happens? Like, did they just... Were they, did they grab you by the nutsack and try and pull you out that way instead of just grabbing your legs or however you're supposed to deliver the, that thing? Uh, oh. Was it like a circumcision thing where they just, like, the doctor was a little tipsy and then just sliced a little too low? Oh, that's awful. That's awful, man. Uh, as you can imagine, this caused some self-esteem issues when I was growing up and that I still deal with this every day. Now I'm wondering, like, what it looks like. Like, is it just the normal nutsack that, that just hangs down like a pendulum almost? Or is, like, is part of the sack gone as well? I, I don't. I don't know. I would think the sack would probably not be there anymore. Um... Uh, you call yourself half sack in the next sentence, but I'm pretty sure that's just like the the nickname that you I guess self apply. Uh, all right, sorry, I'm just getting off off track here. Uh, throughout high school, I never really wanted a girlfriend, even when girls were interested in me, because I was super self conscious of my half sack. And girls, I became in college, I became very introverted, and it caused me to graduate with literally no friends, and I regret that so much now. Uh, yeah, that's rough, man, especially for something you don't have any control over, and that you're uh, honestly, you're, you're given too much, too much power for it to have over your life. But I can understand that. Like, if it's you feel so different than everyone, because I, I mean, I don't know anybody who has that affliction, and I'm sure it's pretty rare. And so you, you must feel really alone with something like that. I feel you. Now I'm 22, and I was recently accepted to medical school. Oh, you're doing fine. Uh, I start next year, but I've never had a girlfriend, never got my dick wet, and now it's killing me. Uh, for over the past two years, my sense of self worth has been dependent on finding a girl that will go out with me and now i'm not in college anymore it's even harder to meet people i'm working two jobs have a very pretty successful career path laid out in front of me when i start med school but my goal is to be in a relationship before next summer uh, i'm average looking not fat and intelligent i guess yeah you're in medical school dude you, you can't be a dumbass uh, but i don't know how to put myself there now i've tried online dating sites but it really never works out how do i get how do i meet a girl within the next year thanks man uh and if you decide to put this on the podcast, my anonymity is appreciated. Yeah, there's there's nothing on here about you anyway, man. Um, yeah, so um, yeah, that's that's rough, dude. I guess I can't even empathize with it because I I don't have any physical ailments or deformities like that. Uh, but says your goal pretty much right now is first of all, dude, take a step back and you're in medical school. You've got a good career laid out. Uh, the only thing you're worried about is that you're 22 and, in your own words, uh, you've never got your dick wet, like, and you want a girlfriend. Like, yeah, that, that does suck. That's rough. If you, like, that, that is a killer on your confidence if you're, you know, if you take a long break in between partners or something, you start to be like, oh, am I not desirable anymore? Is, is there something that changed about me? Or, or is everybody just, you know, are they seeing something they didn't before and now they don't want me? Um... But yeah, that that is pretty rough. You've said you've tried online dating. If you're just if you're out for the girlfriend thing, you need to join some kind of sport or club or something like that where you can meet the girl through some friends. Uh, if you're into hockey or something like that, you can do that. If you're into that's just my example because that's what I would do if I were single and being out of college now wanted to find a chick, go find friends through something like that. And I, if I didn't have any friends that I felt comfortable going through, I would do that. Join a club, meet someone through them. Uh, might take a while, but that's a tried and true method. That's how people have socialized for years and years, believe it or not. Um, if you're just trying to get laid, and that's just the big hump that you'll be able to get over, and then you'll start to feel better about yourself, then just, like you said, you've tried online dating, just get on Craigslist. Get on Craigslist and, and try something, you know? Melissa's laughing at that. But, you know, if that's the thing that's keeping you from being happy right now, and you just want to 
have sex once with anyone, whatever, just to get it out of your system. Just try something like that. Like, it sounds a little desperate, maybe, but whatever. Who cares? You you, you are a little desperate for it, and that's that's fine. You just got to gotta get it to happen. Uh, you can go that route, but if it's the girlfriend and the emotional attachment and that that you really want more than anything, uh, you got to join a club. You got to find a common interest. You got to do something like that. Go to a convention for something you're interested in. I mean, Jesus, uh, anything at all where you know you'll be able to meet not even just a ton of chicks, just make some steady guy friends, and then through them you'll meet meet whoever you're interested in. Like, there's there's no laid out path to how this has to go. There's a lot of different options, and the, the best way is just to cast a really wide net. You know, get yourself out there in as many spheres as you can. Uh, yeah, and I understand, man. This is a, this is a rough story. I feel really bad for you. Um, so that's, that's all the advice I can give, honestly. Um, you... It it might not be within the next year though. Like it's it's hard to if you're starting from ground zero. Um, actually, what am I talking about? If you get out there right away and you start going to, to clubs, meetings, uh, expos, whatever the hell hobbies you're into, then uh, yeah, that that is definitely uh, what I would suggest. Just do that. Do your best. And worst case scenario, dude, is this doesn't pan out in the next year. Uh, but you're in fucking medical school if you haven't figured that out yet, and uh, that's going to make you very, very attractive in a few years. You're, you could get fat, but if you're a doctor, you're going to be, you're going to be a-okay, buddy. Don't, don't worry about it, all right? So, uh, sorry I couldn't be a more help. I just don't have enough experience there to, to make it a perfect answer. Um, what, you want to say something? Yeah. Yeah, well, come over here. Sit down. All right, well, Melissa's going to, here, you come sit on this side so it gets the mic. All right, so here's the the actual question. So Melissa's been walking around I doing stuff. I heard it. Yeah, okay. And I heard your answer, and it's it's okay. You, you don't have experience. But I dated someone with one nut, and <laughs> I'm not going to get into any details about it, but you shouldn't worry about it, and I think it's something that, I don't know. I think it makes you stronger if you bring it up as a con topic of conversation before you get to the point of sex. Then, like, oh, yeah, have one nut, you know, born that way. I mean, it's not something that you're going to want to spring on someone because it will feel like an insecure issue if you do um, because you waited so long to tell them. But if you bring it up as, like, casual conversation, as, like, oh, she had something that she wasn't very secure about. Be like, oh, yeah, I know how you feel. Use it as a point of relating to someone. Yeah. I mean, topic of conversation. It, use it to get them interested. Be like, hey, I have the same number of testicles as I have penises. And then they don't know, <laughs> they don't know which direction it's going to go. And so they, they – that, that's probably not a good piece of advice what I just said. But no, Melissa's right. Yeah, you don't want to – That's pretty good. No, yeah, you don't want to, like – Leave it till the end, because then it does seem like you almost were trying to keep it from them. Because it doesn't matter. It just means like, oh, okay, well, I only have to suck one ball now. Like, hey, yeah, there you I go. I don't have to try to fit both of them in my mouth. It's not that big of a deal. It's not gross. I mean, balls are gross anyway, so you should feel better that you only have one. Yeah, less birth control. Doesn't needed, matter. Maybe. Actually, no. no. Probably just, <laughs> I don't know. But, yeah, that's, thank you, Melissa. It, it doesn't matter. They don't care. Yeah. So there you go. You got a female perspective on that one. Um, yeah, just you, you, don't be so down on yourself, man. Not the end of the world, but uh, I'm glad Melissa piped in there because getting it out in the open up front is much, much preferred to leaving it as some, you know, uh, skeleton in your closet when it really shouldn't be at all. But uh, anyway... That is the end of the episode for this week. Thank you guys. Uh, check out my Patreon page. I'd really appreciate it if you guys would look at that. Everything helps over there. And, uh, of course, uh, remember to visit this week's sponsor uh, at Tim's Taxidermy and Barbecue.biz. That is Tim's Taxidermy and Barbecue.biz. Thanks. Love you. <laughs>